after two weeks of Jeff Wittick exposing David Dobrik, David has finally come out and addressed everything. David never addresses any drama, so this is huge. He showed private DMs, he shared his side, and a lot of stuff actually contradicts what Jeff has been saying. It's a mess, so let's get into it. For the past few weeks, Jeff Wittick has taken to social media to completely expose David. After David never texted him after his last surgery, Jeff decided that was the final straw and ended their friendship. He said he was done protecting David and finally told his truth. He said David stopped paying his medical bills, which in return ruined his credit score. He said David blamed him for the accident during a documentary with Casey Neistat, and he was just mad that David got to live his life while he was stuck with lifelong injuries. David finally broke his silence during the newest episode of His Views podcast. The episode is called Discussing What Happened, and it's nearly an hour long. We're going to talk about everything David said in this episode and go over a few differences between David's side and Jeff's side. After all, the truth always lies somewhere in between. The episode starts off with David, Jason, and Natalie building up to the main topic. Jason said the situation has been building up for some time now, and he told David he needs to talk about how he's feeling. Jason was really encouraging David to air out all his feelings and just try his best to be as open and honest as possible. David said he doesn't like talking about his feelings because he likes to make videos that make other people happy. He said these last two years have completely killed his bubbly personality and now he's just a shell of his past self. Like I'm, I'm making these videos to make other people laugh and to make other people smile. Like why should they worry about how I'm feeling? You know, you've been going through it the last year and, you know, you haven't been the same. And yeah, we're all we're, over. we're all worried about you. <laughs> we're trying to get old Dave back. David decided to do something that he's never done before. He's going to be dedicating his next few podcasts to talking about things he would normally avoid. He said he wants to get a bunch of stuff off his chest, starting with Jeff. They started things off by saying that they let Jeff know that they would be filming this episode and addressing everything, and Jason asked Jeff if he wanted to come on and air things out in person. Jeff declined that offer. David said the accident was the worst thing that's ever happened to him, and he said he would do anything to take it back. He wants to make it clear that what happened was an accident, and he never meant to hurt Jeff. David acknowledged why Jeff has recently become increasingly angry towards him, and admitted it was because he broke a promise that he made to Jeff. Jeff found out from Casey Neistat that David put all the blame on him during their documentary and blamed the accident on Jeff being crazy. Since that was the main reason Jeff got so mad at David, David decided to go over what happened the day of the accident from his point of view. David said they wanted to do something really big for their comeback video. They just took a huge break because of COVID and the return video had to be huge. David had five activities planned for their trip to Utah. The first being the excavator. David said the plan was never to swing off the excavator. It was to wakeboard with it. At one point during the day, Jeff came up to one of their friends and said the wakeboarding thing was really boring and he suggested they do something cool. And yeah, the morning came where we were in Utah, we were filming it. <sighs> and uh, and yeah, we were getting the shots, wakeboarding. I remember Jeff came up to one of my buddies, one of our friends, I don't know why I say it like that. And then later to me and he was like, this is boring as shit. What are we like, preschoolers? Like, let's do something cool. He said he wanted to swing from it and I loved the idea. I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Um, um, so. Jeff had just come from skydiving all week and Natalie said their adrenaline was really high and they wanted to do more and more. Jeff put out the idea of them swinging off of the excavator and David agreed. So that's definitely different from what Jeff claimed happened. In Jeff's documentary, he said they wanted to make a funny video, so they started trying out new ideas. Jeff said David was pressuring him to get on the rope because the angles looked better that way, and even claimed he had proof. When that's complete there's 20 people on the beach that are witnesses. I have six terabytes of footage of you asking me, begging me to go out there and do the thing again, and that you would spin it slow. You just want to take me out there because it's more scenic. Since their stories are so different, David decided to show a message from Jeff right before the accident. 
David said when he met Jeff at the hospital, Jeff was in good spirits and he told David to pull out his phone and check his messages. David pulled out his phone and saw a message from Jeff with a link to a video. The video was of some guy swinging off an excavator and Jeff said, let's recreate this. Um, and I remember, I remember Jeff told me to check my DMs and it was, it was a video that he found like 15 minutes before the accident that somebody posted and he said, let's recreate this. And it was a guy swinging from an excavator and flying off. I didn't see that DM till the hospital and he jokes. He's like, I didn't mean literally, haha, <laughs> like he joked. Um, that was the first time I saw the DM. That was the first time I opened it. Jeff made David promise him that no one would ever find out the stunt was his idea. Um, and then he asked, he's like, can you, can, you pro can you promise me one thing? And I said, what? And he's like, can you just promise that no one ever knows that this was my idea? And I was like, absolutely. Like, that's not a big deal. Um, and then that's the promise I broke recently. David says he wishes Jeff was a little bit more honest and transparent with what actually happened. He said Jeff was the one that wanted to keep the accident to himself and David respected his wishes. But then it started going around that David was the one trying to silence Jeff in an attempt to cover up what happened. David said that was never the case and he was just following how Jeff wanted to handle that situation. Then they moved on to Jeff's documentary. David said the documentary is where things started to get a little weird. Apparently one of Jeff's friends came up to someone who works for David and said their goal was to make David cry for the video. David felt really weirded out by that and it just didn't sit right with him. We were filming the doc and one of his guys that works with him um, went up to Taylor and was like, we, we really want to make David cry in this piece. We really want him to know what he's done. That's where I started to feel like, oh, f what's going on here? Like, someone's not being transparent with me here. Like, I almost feel like I'm being pushed into a corner. David said he can take 80 to 100% of the responsibility for what happened to Jeff, but it's starting to feel like he's taking 150% of the responsibility. David also addressed the medical bill issue. Jeff claimed that David stopped paying his medical bills and said it was now affecting his credit score. David said he's been paying all the medical bills so far and he's paid $78,000 towards Jeff's surgeries. David said the reason that they haven't been paying any bills recently is because Jeff's assistant stopped responding to them. But like, Natalie has asked multiple times, like loop us into all these surgeries and we're just not getting looped into anything. Mm -hmm. And then and then we're blindsided when he goes to another surgery and then he'll like come out and be like, like his most recent surgery, I didn't know that he had a surgery until he unfollowed me on Instagram. And that's because, you know, it's a two-way street. We can be, we can be like, when's your next surgery? But also we're not, no one's looping us into what we need to be paying for. And then they moved on to the roast of Bryce Hall. Jeff said he decided to pull his set after SeatGeek cut three of his jokes and Jeff blamed the whole thing on David. Since SeatGeek and David have a very close working relationship, Jeff just figured it was SeatGeek trying to protect David. David said that's not true at all and the one joke that Jeff did make on David actually made the final cut. David also opened up about his own mental health. He said he can understand why Jeff is upset seeing him travel the world for his new show, but what people can't see is just how depressed he is. He said not a day goes by that he doesn't think about what happened and it's eating him alive. He apologized to Jeff on camera and said he's sorry that this happened to him. Jason went on to ask David what he's doing to make a change and make sure his content is safer. David said they're still doing some goofy stunts, but now they're doing it with the right people around and take a lot of precautions. To end things off, David said there's so many things that he could have done differently and he's sorry. He reads every comment and he says he wants to keep learning and changing. He said his goal with these next few podcasts isn't to point fingers at anyone, he just wants to vent so he can move forward. It's only been a few hours since David posted his podcast and Jeff is already planning on responding. He tweeted, new podcast tonight, recording now, up in two hours. Don't go to sleep yet, David. You're going to want to see this one. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.